All right, stand up for me real quick. Squeeze your butt, put your arms over your head, take a big breath. Just, you guys have got Panini syndrome. You go, squeeze your butt as hard as you can. Like, no, actually squeeze your butt. You can, it's all inhibited from uh, your short hip flexors. There you go, take a big breath. There, it feels better. All right, have a seat. So what I want to do is I'm going to sit in this chair and you can talk, ask me about your shoulder pain, which is really what this is about. I know, it's the only reason you're here. Why does my back hurt? Um, there's two ideas I want to throw around today real quick. The first one, I'm, and the, you can see why my wife thinks I'm a little crazy, I have a little monkey brain. Do you guys remember that soda that you made in middle school? You guys some may remember this, where you went down the line and you put all the soda in one cup. Do you remember that? What was that called? Suicide. That's what we call it, a suicide. It's probably not PC to say that now. I don't know what the uh, appropriate uh, uh, gender uh, identification for that suicide drink. But uh, the idea is that is very much in my head these days. I think about the suicide a lot. And I'm going to come back to that in a second. So hold that suicide. The second one is this killer whale called Tilikum. Do you guys remember? Do you guys see Blackfish? Documentary about uh, keeping killer whales in captivity. Turns out it's less of a good idea than we thought. Spoiler. But uh, one of the things that happens, I live in Northern California where they kept Tilikum. And one of the things that happens is when you put a killer whale in captivity, that big dorsal fin starts to fold over. Have you guys seen that before? And they called it folded fin syndrome, which is, I think is nicer than floppy fin syndrome for them big male orcas. But people are like, what's going on there? What, why, is that, why is that fin folding over? And it's happening for a couple of reasons. One is that the way our tissues work is through a process, especially our mechanically based tissues called mechanotransduction. It's a phenomenon that you have to load something mechanically for itself to express at a cellular level. So if you want your Achilles to be an Achilles, it has to do Achilles-like thing. It has to absorb force, isometrically pause force, and it has to generate force. That's an Achilles. And if you don't load your Achilles in that way, you're not going to have a healthy Achilles. It can never be that way. So we suddenly are recognizing that if you put an orca into this capt captive environment, you don't load the orca fin, what happens? Or the collagen at the base of the orca fin becomes weak. And so we start this degeneration of that collagen. Second around that is that if you change the behavior of the orca and you spend a bunch of time at the surface in a little small sort of environment, and it's not hunting and swimming and playing, but it's at the surface, you subject that orca fin to higher gravitational loads. That moment arm is always there. And so the combination leads to that fin that folds over. So that's the two ideas, suicide, orca fin, right? Now, the problem with us currently is that we are the orcas is that we are engaged in sort of modern world, modern entertainment. We're exposed to a lot of forces that change and influence our behavior. Why did you sit in this chair? Because it's the polite thing to do, because it was set up for us. Is this designed for human beings? No, not at all. It's designed for us to kind of manage an intense group of people in a polite way so everyone can see. It has nothing to do with our physiology, nothing to do with sort of our inherited needs to move and load and breathe and be in sunshine and all the things that our guests have talked about. So the thing that's happening right now is that we have just stress tested ourselves in COVID. And what we saw was a real haves and have nots. Let's look at any metric that you care about. Suicide rates in kids. Up or down? Depression, up or down? Obesity, up or down? Diabetes, opiate use, alcohol use. Choose something you care about. ACL injury rates in girls, through the roof. What's up? How are we doing? What I'll tell you is as a fitness community, you have failed, right? Because ultimately we have not done what we believe to be the highest calling of science. E.O. Wilson, an evolution biologist, says the highest calling of science is to transform the humanities. The highest calling of fitness is to transform our communities. And we have yet to fulfill that promise. We are seeing a vertical. Well, we are, you know, I know how many grams of collagen I'm going to have with vitamin C at two in the morning. I'm on my turmeric. And, right, we have become very good in this vertical of taking care of ourselves. But we haven't done a good enough job of taking those lessons and applying them backwards to our communities. We saw a generation of people who didn't know how to cook. We had a generation of people who didn't know how to exercise and move their bodies. And that's on us. We have to do a better job of continuing to change in our own communities. And that means with the family. You know, this whole, like, think globally, act locally. 
is really about a decentralized system where we all go back into our communities and through our tight social networks begin to transform our neighborhoods. That's the, the place. That's where we're going to begin this thing. And what we're seeing is, uh, and whew, I don't even know if I should mention this. I'm going to mention it. Okay, I'm a bad person. Hang on. I have a, our financial advisor. Uh, okay, back up. My only skill is pattern recognition. So I'm pretty good at it. That's all I'm good at. I also was a geography major. So I studied interaction of humans and environments, right? So I have this with our uh, financial planner. I have this thing, what I call the Bet Against Humanity Fund. And when I see an interesting technology that, like a continuous glucose monitor, I'm like, let's invest in those. Why should I care about continuous glucose monitoring? Because I think it's so hard to change behavior. It is so difficult to get someone to walk, to get someone to drink water, to get someone to hug, to get someone to talk about their feelings, that it's easier to have a technical solution on top of that. And what we're currently experiencing, we're about to experience is a landslide of these sort of insidious environmental demands and changes in the environment on the human, and we don't even know what's happening to us. And what we have to do is, do a better job of sort of saying, hey, we're understanding that if we have communities, we talk about our feelings, we know how to eat, we know how to move, then we can get people to base camp. Because right now the internet is a wash with techniques and tools and keto bros. And if I do this secret squirrel workout program and I follow Matt Frazier instead of so-and-so, I'll achieve some pinnacle. And it's really confusing. Does anyone ever feel confused out there? I'm pretty good at my job, and I'm like, I don't understand what's going on here. Don't drink gluten, right? Gluten-free vodka. Don't eat the hamburger buns anymore. Apparently, I get abs, and I've, I've won Instagram that day, and then I'm healthy. So if that's my feeling, what's happening in the greater world? And what we're seeing is it's the orca phenomenon more and more. And so what I'm asking you to do is to hold this orca idea and to simplify these practices and simplify the, some of the best behaviors in your relationships around. Because if we don't become those agents of change and those big nodes of change in our communities, we will continue to fail. And we will continue to see those of us who have picked up a ruck will continue to move further and further away. And our goal is to transform society through community. That's our goal. That is what we have the potential to do. The second piece of this is that suicide dream which means I'm going to ask you what is essential, right? Because if I look at your and ask you to tell me and kind of cut through the middle of your program and say, what's essential here? We're into this idea that came from this architect named Matthew Fredericks. And it's this idea called informed simplicity. When we get started in fitness, you're like super simple. Nutrition, bam. Some heavy weights, bam, right? I just get my sleep, I look great. I'm 110 years old. And pretty soon it's kettlebells and dumbbells and keto and intermittent fasting and, and adding in all of these tools. I went to this cool program and we did maces. I'm only a mace guy now. No, I only drink goat milk. I have been around this community for a second. I'm pretty sure I saw Julie at the CrossFit Games eating like a sweet potato between events because we were like, it's paleo. That's right. And I was like, you know, there's rice and other things you can eat. You're like, nope, paleo. We've come a little ways. But the idea is we're keeping adding complexity into our systems. And pretty soon what we have is an aggregated, complicated systems. What is essential? When we move towards this idea of informed simplicity, we can begin to understand the things that we need to wrap our heads around. And for me, as a physical therapist, as a person who gets to trans, you know, move across the globe and see everyone's dirty movement laundry, all their musculoskeletal problems, all their performance issues, I'm talking about how do I work with Great Britain at the Olympic level team? I have all the, the Olympic coaches and all the physios. How do, I, how do we transform the NFL? How do we work with these big university systems? And it turns out for me that positional restoration is one of those things. I become agnostic. Are you eating fruits and vegetables? Yes or no. Do you get enough protein? Yes or no. Are you getting sleep? Yes or no. Do you have good relationships? Yes or no. And when you begin to look at your program and ask what is essential here, then a lot of things start to become more understandable and relatable to you. I can see that this is just a different tool 
that I can help to sort of modify or modulate those one important things. I showed you today, if you attended my little mobility session thing, that that breath work for me is one of those central pieces because I can take it with me to modulate up and down. I can work with pain. I can work with performance. So around my sort of breathing sort of movement self, that ends up being one of those central pieces that is a key component instead of just that complexity. And so we're always going to be battling this suicide thing we're seeing on the internet, this, this multi-drink where we want to be entertained and it's novel and it's new and hot. But don't lose track of what is essential in your own program. Work towards simplifying that so that you can be much more consistent than you are uh, heroic. I mean, we love people with these heroic efforts, but the consistency is a long time. You just rinse, wash, repeat. And the second thing is we are battling an epidemic of this orcaness, and it's made more confusing by how we're presenting the high-level techniques. How, what rope do I take up Everest? Which crampons do I use? Which, meanwhile, we have left everyone behind on the trail, and we've got to get everyone to base camp. Keep in mind about those two things. How can you simplify what's essential in your own program? And two, how can we make sure that we're not leaving everyone with folded fin syndrome? Make sense? Thank you very much. Have a great day. If you want to come talk to us, I'll be at the, uh, at the booth.